In this tutorial, we'll provide a guided tour of the Burp Suite user interface and we'll point out many of the cool tools, features and options that you need to know about to get full value from Burp Suite. So when Burp first opens, you see the project launcher here. This is where you can select what kind of project to create or open and the configuration options to use. We cover this in a different tutorial, so for now I'm just going to launch a default new project. In the main Burp UI, at the top we have a series of tabs containing different Burp tools and options, and this is the quickest way to get into the different areas of Burp that you'll need to be working with. It's in the dashboard tab, this is where you can view and configure Burp's automated tasks, things like scans and live tasks. You can also see other data that's generated as Burp runs. So just to see that in action very quickly, I'm just going to run a very quick scan. Kicking off that scan opens the task, it creates this entry on the dashboard and we can see details of the scan as it progresses. So here we can see the requests that are being made, um, the numbers of issues that are being reported. Under issue activity, we can see a live list of all of the issues as they are discovered from anywhere within Burp. And under the event log, we can see a log of interesting events and other information that's occurred. If we click on view details on a task, this opens a window just for that task where we can see more detailed information about it. So for a scan, we can see all of the items that are being audited. We can again see the issue activity log just for this scan and the event log just for this scan. In the target tab, this is where Burp records all of the information that has been found against different websites that you browse or websites that you scan. So on the left, we have a folder view of the URL structure on each site. Then we can see the content that exists at different URLs. And finally, we can see the issues that have been reported. Under target scope, you can tell Burp exactly what websites you are targeting, what's in scope and what's out of scope. And you can use target scope to drive all kinds of cool features throughout Burp. We'll cover target scope in a separate tutorial. The proxy is the tool that you use to intercept, view and modify traffic between your browser and the target server. So just to very quickly see how that works, I'm going to open Burp's browser and visit a URL. Here in the intercept view, we can forward, edit different requests that are happening and responses. I'm just going to forward everything for now. In the HTTP history view, we can see all of the requests that have been made look at the requests, look at the responses. We could do the same for WebSockets history if the application is using WebSockets. And we could also, in the Options tab, control all of the settings that are used to fine tune the behavior of Burp Proxy. So one thing that's useful is anywhere you see a config panel in Burp or many other panels as well, you have these icons. If we click on the question mark, we get some immediate contextual inline documentation for the feature that we're looking at. And if you click on the gear icon, this is where you can load or save the options just from this panel, or you could just restore defaults if you need to. Burp Intruder is a tool that is used for automating custom attacks. So the way this works is you send a request into Intruder from elsewhere in Burp. So if we go to the proxy history and find a suitable request, we can do send to Intruder. This opens a new tab in Intruder just for this request. We can configure the target, details of where we want payloads to go, and details of the payloads themselves. We'll cover how to use Burp Intruder in a separate tutorial. But Repeater is used to reissue an individual request and modify it and send it again over and over. So if we do the same, if we send a request to Burp Repeater, here the request appears. We can edit it, we can click send, and we can see the response. Again, but repeater is covered in a separate tutorial. Moving along the top, we have various other tools you use more occasionally. So Burp Sequencer is used to analyze the randomness, the entropy that is contained in session tokens or other data that needs to be random. It runs various statistical tests on a big data sample to tell you if the data appears to be random. 
that decoder is used to decode and encode data in various formats. So if you run into data that is UL encoded, HTML encoded, Base64 encoded, you can work with it here. Verb comparer is used to do a word or byte level comparison between different items of data. So for example, if you have two big responses that are very similar and contain some minor differences, you can send them to Burp comparer and it will highlight exactly where the differences are. Burp extender is used to customize Burp's behavior by loading Burp extensions. So these can be extensions that you've written yourself using the Burp extender API, or they can be extensions from the BAP store that have been written by other Burp users. So there are hundreds of extensions here that have been contributed by the Burp user community. These are used to enhance Burp's behavior in all kinds of ways. So it's really worth playing with some of these. Under project options, we have numerous categories of option that affect how Burp will work in relation to the current project. So project options are saved in your project file. If you're using a project file, you can save them in config files and load them again. We cover that in a separate tutorial. But all of these settings are divided into separate areas covering network connections, HTTP, TLS, session handling, and some other areas. Under user options are a different set of options that are more around your own installation of Burp and how you want it to behave, which aren't tied to particular projects. So some interesting options here under display, this is where you can configure font size of your interface and whether to use a dark theme or a light theme. So Burp will support both flavors of interface according to your preference. Under miscellaneous, you can configure hotkeys. So Burp supports tons of hotkeys for different common actions. And this is where you can configure those. There are many options that are hotkeyable, which don't have a hotkey assigned by default and you can define one here if it's an action that you use a lot. It's worth noting that there are some options which can be defined at the user level and at the project level. So if you take, say, upstream proxy servers, if you're working on a penetration test for a particular client engagement, you might be on their network and need to configure a certain proxy server. You would do that under project options and configure that here by overriding the user options for this project. Whereas if you have a proxy server on your home network that you use by default, anytime you're there, you can set it here in user options and that will be the one that is used if you don't override it. You can use the context menu within Burp everywhere. Everywhere you see an entry in a table or anytime you see an individual HTTP request, you can use the context menu to access all kinds of actions. So you can send just this request to be scanned with a passive scan, active scan, or a configurable scan. You could send it to individual Burp tools to drive additional testing workflows. You can view it in your browser. You can use various engagement tools for common purposes. So if you want to know other locations that link to a particular URL, particular request, you can use find references. You can use content discovery, where Burp will use big word lists to try to discover content beneath a URL that isn't necessarily linked. You can schedule tasks. You can create a CSERF POC, do various other things. In the menu bar at the top of the Burp UI, we have various other options. So on the Burp menu, we can do a search. This will search through all of the data in different Burp tools for items that match a particular expression. You can access Burp's configuration library. This is where you can maintain your own config files for different purposes or access various built-in configurations that come with Burp. Under user options, you can restore defaults for all of your user options, or you can save your current user options to a config file or load it back later. Also on the Burp menu, we have various other tools that you will use occasionally. So Burp Infiltrator is an IAST tool that can be used to instrument an application that you plan to scan so that you can see inside the application as it's running and get a lot more in interesting information about it and find some dangerous code paths where your payloads might be hitting a vulnerability. Burp Click Bandit is a tool for generating click jacking attacks. So the way this works is you copy the ClickBandit script into your browser and you then walk through the sequence of actions that you want a victim to execute and ClickBandit will generate a proof of concept clickjacking attack. The Collaborator client lets you work manually with Burp Collaborator payloads. 
You can use this to generate Burp Collaborator payloads, copy them to your clipboard. You can then use them in your own attacks, sending requests through Burp Repeater or as payloads in Burp Intruder or anything like that. And then you can poll for Collaborator interactions to see the results of using those payloads. We'll cover Burp Collaborator and the Burp Collaborator client in a separate tutorial. In the project menu, you can also, as for user options, you can restore defaults for project options. You can save them to a config file or load them back. You can save a copy of your project. So if you've started work in a temporary project, you decide you want to save it, you can save it to a project file. Or if you're already working on a project file, you can save a copy. There are some menu options for the intruder and repeater tools, which we'll cover in separate tutorials. In the window menu, you can detach individual Burp tools, float them out as a separate window if you want to arrange your UI that way. As well as detaching and reattaching individual tools, you can reorder the top level tabs if you prefer them to be in a different sequence. In the help menu, you can access Burp's documentation, getting started help, you can go to the support center, you can see diagnostic information about your installation if you're experiencing any problems. If the embedded browser is not working correctly on your platform, you can run the health check to find out why. You can update your Burp license, check for updates and other things. So that's a general guide to the Burp Suite user interface. Do check out our other video tutorials for more details on using each of the Burp Suite tools, features, and options that we've mentioned.